What's up guys, welcome back to the vlog. Today is gonna be a short vlog once again because it's a little late. It's 11.30, I got work tomorrow. So I don't have, to, I don't, haven't had time and I don't have time to do anything on the engine. It's been a super busy week. So I'm just gonna show you guys really quick the uh, wastegate. I'm just gonna explain a little bit on, you know, like what it does and how it works and how to install it. All right, so a boost controller, what it does, it limits the amount of the exhaust gases going in the turbo by opening up and it releases it through this pipe and it comes out. It's initially like a boost controlling device. We have boost solenoids and this is like the boost controller. So if I wanna push out, let's just say 20 PSI, but my motor is able to push out 40, this is gonna release 20 PSI worth of gases, so the turbo only pushes out 20 PSI. So that is how this works. Sometimes when some engines make a lot of power, when they have big cams and there's a lot of air coming in, people get two wastegates. You could get two 44 millimeter wastegates. I have one 44 millimeter wastegate, which should do. And what does happen when the wastegate is too small is you get what's called boost creep. Boost creep is when you're targeting, let's say 25 PSI, and it's actually going higher, going to 27, 28, 29. That is boost creep. That's because the wastegate is too small and is not allowing enough of the exhaust gases to escape. So the only other place they can go is through the turbo, because it creeps up the boost. The wastegate is, you know, there's a whole bunch of parts, but the main parts is this top part, which is the actuator top. And then in here goes the springs. As you can see, these springs are all color coded. You have black, blue, gold, uh, green, red, white, and the steel color. They're all color coded. There is a chart. This is the MVR Tile 44 millimeter wastegate, and they're they are all color coded so you know how much boost or bar that to put in. So like I was saying, it's the actuator top. And the spring goes in in here, which I'm gonna show you guys how to put that. You have this, which you know this is the main housing of it. Um, this is for the air the ports for the boost solenoid, so it can read and tell how much boost this thing to allow through to the turbo. And these little open jets, I mean uh, ports right here, that's for water because this one can be water cooled. I'm not going to water cool it. There is no need. I am not racing this on the track. This is gonna be a street car. Now, in here that goes, that's inside the housing, there's a valve. And I'm gonna show you guys that and the valve seat. Don't forget the valve seat. So if I take off the V-band carefully, take off this, you can see right down here, here is the valve guide. There is the valve. Let's see, I could push it in. And let me see if I can blow it out. There we go, I blew it out. And uh, this is the valve seat, this is to protect it. This fits right in here. So you put this on, see, nice tight fit. This goes on here, and see how I can't even move it? You know, I can pick it up, but side to side, it doesn't even move. And then I'm gonna slip this back on, there we go. And then you put on the nut and bolt, right through. All right, once that V-band is on, there's no way this thing is ever gonna come off. So this looks good. Let me take off the actuator top so I can put on the springs. All right, so I loosen all of these six screws going all around, comes right off. And as you can see from the factory, there is no spring. There is a chart for the spring pressure and what which one to use. I have a 2012 and newer, this one, I, you know, I just bought it, it's 2019. So I'm gonna follow that chart and I'm gonna push 0.9 bar. Remember one bar is 14.5 uh, PSI. So I'm gonna push 0.9, that should get me to 30 pounds with my electronical boost solenoid. And if you go all the way over, 0.9 is the green, red, and black springs. So I'm gonna get those together. Alrighty, so you can see in here, there are little tiny grooves. That's for the springs. 
to stay stuck on there they kind of you know that way they don't move on you and it you know helps out a little bit there we go start with the smaller one it makes it easier and just keep going up in size just like so all right the springs are on here when placing the actuator top on make sure not to pinch this little gasket orange gasket thing um, hopefully I can do this by hand I'm not gonna make any promises uh, never done this before normally what you need is a vise and a clamp so you can push down because this is a lot of pressure we have any all right so what I'm gonna have to do here I'm gonna take off the uh, wastegate bring it to my basement because I have a many different types of vices there all right so here we are in my basement at it again let's put on these springs see if uh see if it'll work what do you say of course not because you know why because it's from harbor freight and it's not holding the pressure i got another one this one's actually really good but it's a lot shorter if i can push this down I can slip under there we go Look at that. All right, so there's somewhat on. There we go. Just want to make sure I'm not pinching the orange because I can still see a little bit through. Perfect. All right then. Now I can just start tightening them down little by little, crisscross pattern, just like you were doing a tire. All right, there we go. Uh, the actuator cap is on nice and tight remember how i was able to push this down easily before yeah not so easy now because of all the springs so now we come back here um i have the airport with the banjo fitting don't forget the washers on either side of the banjo and tighten that up well i'm not going to tighten it up all the way i'm going to leave it loose because i'm not sure which direction this little guy is going um, so that will be tightened down later. But that is it guys. You now understand the wastegate. You saw it opened up and you saw it on, how to put it on. I'm not gonna go back outside to install this in my in my garage because it is pouring. I don't feel like getting soaked. It's already 12.15. I'm tired. Like I said, I gotta go to work. So again, thanks for sticking around, watching this video. Remember, go down and hit that subscribe button hit that post notification button because if you don't know, you should know. This wastegate is going on a 700 horsepower 2JZ swap S14. Really clean. If you guys don't know this, make sure you go back in videos and watch me get the motor, get the car, see why I'm doing this because you know my original motor kind of broke. So anyway, Again, thanks for watching. Remember, work hard, stay humble.